straight. That's the only player that's possibly drawing in such Dua drawing dead, although he may not understand that because he may feel his flush draw is live. But I think facing a big bet, we'll at least see such Dua get out of the way. And Wendell, who checked the flop, decided to bet nearly the pot with a 400 euro bet after both of his opponents checked that queen of clubs turn. Mike contemplating things. We see that he has just about the check mark. Basically, only a 10 would hurt him. And it does say 4%, so there must have been a 10 folded by somebody else, but technically there's three tens. I guess technically there's only two tens, but if you're thinking, if you obviously the players don't know what the other players have, so Mike should be thinking that there's three other tens. Not afraid to call at this point in time with the best hand. But if he raises here, there's nothing worse than him that's likely getting it in at that point in time. Mike checking once again. Now, can Wendell fire out for his stack? And then how would Mike react to a bet of 1.1K? He is indeed. Lots of heart. He is not doing this because he thinks his aces are good. He's doing this to push Mike off the pot. It's not as if Mike would call with a single pair in this spot, so it's to push Mike off speculative holdings. Now, can Mike call here with the second nuts? He is thinking things over. I think we will see him call. I won't be surprised if we see him fold. It is a tough spot. It is a massive pot. Mike taking his time. And it does make the call. He'll be thrilled to see that he has not necessarily doubled the stack, but won a massive pot of 3,600 euros. Wendell, meanwhile, showing heart left and right on so many hands. This time it did not work out for him. He did have Mike thinking. And it's not the last, apparently, we've been seeing of Wendell tonight. He is reaching into his pocket for either more chips or some tasty notes. We see the floor coming over, so it looks like it's likely going to be some bills. or perhaps the floor is coming to color up some lower denominated chips. Or perhaps he's using these lower denominated chips so that he can spread out a little bit of Wendell's reload. Whatever it is, the floor knows what they're doing and sorting things out relatively quickly while the dealer is getting the deck ready for the next hand.
I'm being told that there is no sound on the stream, so I'm trying to sort that out, but I'm not quite sure if that's the case or not. But meanwhile, I will announce the action as if you guys are listening to me at the moment. So we have 240 in the pot, Frode with Broadway, we have also Martin with Broadway. We have Sejdua with the set of queens. It is Martin, though, betting out for 240 euros. Frudy does just call. Does this price Sejdua in? With his set, he knows that he's likely behind the Broadway. Does indeed call. So unless this board pairs up, we're likely to see a chop pot between Frude and Martin. And the board does not pair up, but a third heart comes out Nobody with uh, two hearts in his hand, so let's see if he can get Martin to fold his Broadway here. The problem is Frude didn't have that much in his stack, but it does get the job done. Instead of a chop pot, we see Frude taking it down. Well played there. Does show the king of hearts for the nut flush draw. He didn't have another heart, though, to back that up, so it's a bit of a tease. Okay, I'm going to try to sort out the sound. I just popped on the stream myself, and I know I've been streaming long enough for there to be sound. So bear with me.
Hello, everybody, and sorry for the technical problems that we had earlier on. Hopefully, you can hear me now. This is Jason Glatzer coming to you live from the Card Casino Bratislava. If you've already been watching, you can tell that this is a 1010 PLO affair. This is all part of the Poker North Masters and the Norwegian Championships taking place all week long until April 2nd, and we'll have cash games every night at a variety of stakes, a variety of games. Tonight we have some good action. I see my friend Danis in seat seven. I live in Lithuania. He won the eight game event for 11,265 euros earlier in the week. I have a nice winner's photo with him. I'm happy to see him at the feature table. Of course, in seat number eight, you must recognize Frode Fagerde. He is the founder of the Norwegian Championships. He put this whole thing together alongside with Card Casino. It's been an entertaining affair so far, and hopefully I can entertain you some more now that the technical problems have been resolved. So we have some mystery hands. We did see Daniel raising it up. There was a button straddle to 70 euros with his double suited hand. Nothing to see here on the first hand. And thus far, because I've been watching the entire time, I was actually commentating, even though you guys couldn't hear me. In seat number three, Mr. Wendell over there, he has been providing all the action. Tried to run a number of bluffs. Also bet big for value as well. He did need to reload or once already. So things have been up and down for him. Right now it's more on the downside than the upside. We have Martin with the Mookie Betts jersey there. We're not a fan of Mookie Betts. I'm originally from New Jersey. Mookie Betts, even though he's on the Dodgers now, he used to play for the Red Sox. But being that I live in Lithuania for so many years, I don't follow baseball that closely anymore. Brody with a beautiful hand on the button. We're hopping right back into the action here. Raising it up to 30 euros. We have Sajdua calling from the small blind and Wendell coming along from the big blind. And Frode has a flush draw, but right now it is Sajdua with his jacks over twos with two pairs that is leading the hand, but it isn't the kind of flop that hit anybody in the face. And Wendell right away, not afraid to, uh, to bet with nothing and Frode folds his flush draw, Sajdua folds his jacks, Wendell gets the job done up to 2,000 euros. Well played. And it looks like the players are having fun. We see some chatter at least between Sajdua in C2 and Wendell in C3. We can see some of the VPIP. This is the frequency that they're putting money into the pot. Wendell has been on the top of that leaderboard since the very beginning. His 66% though is lower than the 88% we saw earlier. So while we were resolving some of those technical problems, he must have folded a bunch of hands. Daniel with a bunch of rags, a meal will likely get into the action. He did just slam. There was no straddle this hand. There has occasionally been a button straddle. Yesterday we saw under the gun straddles. Today is on the button. Sajdua coming along on the button in position with any four, it appears. Wendell also with some mystery cards uh, opting to check and Martin 
checks his option from the big blind. And now we could see everybody's cards. So Wendell, right now with the most equity in his hand, it's just not super easy for him to get value at this point, and very often he could uh, be running into something, but he, now his two pair doesn't look as pretty, and it is checking around. And the ace pairing the board on the river, Emil getting there at the end. That's 25 into 40, everybody folding. Probably if Wendell bet that flop, he had uh, really three pair, not just two pair. He paired up with every board on every card on that board on the flop. If he bet the flop, he probably would be able to take it down. But the pot was small, it was an unvoted pot. And here we can take a look at who is winning and who is losing. You can see Mike is currently the big winner after stacking Wendell. He picked off a bluff by Wendell earlier before we had some volume on the stream. Other than that, there's nobody up or down heaps. But we have a couple more hours at least of play, so that can all change very quickly. And there was a straddle this time around by the button, so we saw the small bind and the big bind full before Emil with his double-suited ace-king-king-four, raising it to 40. Danis opting to call from one seat over with a baby rundown. Brody with a stronger rundown calling from one seat over from that. We have a few folds before Satch Dua calls from the cutoff, and Wendell, who began things with the straddle, calls as well in position. So two clubs on this 10-5-2 flop. Emil's over pair and his ace king of clubs is currently in the lead. Now Danis does have some draws here. He has that flush draw, though it wouldn't be good. And it is a big bet of 375, but it looks like Danis is going to be calling here. Does indeed call. Frude despite hitting top pair, recognizes that top pair likely isn't good enough, at, at least at this point in time. And the pot is already up to 1,200 euros. The queen of hearts on the turn, it didn't hit anyone, but Emil now has two flush draws. He's still ahead with his kings. All Danis has at the moment is he paired his five. He does have some potential outs. Obviously, some of them wouldn't be good, but he is a four would be good, a seven would be good, but he has no way of knowing that it's, and he's put into a tough spot. He would have to call off the rest of his stack here. He's, Danis is a very intelligent poker player, so he's going through the math and believes he has enough equity to make the call. So Emil is a four to one favorite and a 2,400 pot against Danis. It looks like at least that they're running it once, but let's see. Eight of clubs in the river. Both players hit a flush, but Emil with the better flush. Danis is out of chips. There's nothing that's gonna beat that with Emil holding the absolute nuts. Is Danis going to reload or is he getting up? He did win quite a lot. He was on three final tables this week in mixed games. His third final table was winning the eight game for more than 11,000 euros. He is reaching out for some 100 euro bills. It's likely a thousand euro buy-in, but we will take a look at that. He's still not the biggest loser on the table. That honor or dishonor uh, belongs to Wendell at the moment with Mike currently as the big winner. But as players begin to stack off, we will see stack sizes getting bigger and bigger 
as this cash game continues. So if you're wondering what 1,000 euros gets you these days, it's exactly two chips that he's getting some change here. So you guys missed all the lovely things I had to say about Card Casino, but it's my first visit here. I've absolutely loved it here. Tons of space, a couple hundred tables throughout many floors. Very organized event here. Frude in seat eight has been running the Norwegian Championships for many, many years. So it's no surprise about how well organized everything is. Everybody having a good time. There's bars on every floor. There's a buffet on the top floor. You can also order a la carte at many hours of the day. But back to the action. We have 110 euros in the pot on the, on the queen, 5-4 flop with two diamonds. Currently, Sachdua is ahead with his uh, over pair. Although Daniel betting out his flush draw. Martin also has a flush draw. Sajdua opting to call and Martin folding his uh, worst flush draw. Eight of clubs on the turn. Now if Daniel opts to bet again, it's gonna be very hard for Sajdua to call. Daniel does check though, so now Sajdua opts to check behind. And the king of hearts on the river, now such do a, I mean, he could be fearing a 6-7, obviously, which would be the only hand that beats him at his moment, but the top set is a very strong hand, so expect at least a call here, if not more. Does make the call. Is happy to see that Daniel was trying to uh, pull a rabbit out of the hat after missing his draws. Doesn't look like we're gonna have a button straddle this time around. So it'll be Frode first to act under the gun. folding his rag, such do a folding as well. It goes around to Wendell, who has lowered his VPIP, his table leading VPIP with a fold. Martin raising it up to 40. Is it gonna be one of those hands where everybody folds? No, but Dane is waking up with the ace, king, king, six. It is double suited. Is he going to three bet? Is he gonna call? We know he's not folding. It does look like a three bet, and indeed it is to 130 euros. Martin has been playing on the tight side, but he is in position. He does have a pretty hand and does make the call. Now, if Martin flops top two with the case king, he's gonna be in a world of hurt. Also, if the hearts come, but it isn't that kind of flop, but meanwhile, we were talking about the ace, king, king, but it is the six that connected on the six, six, four board for Danis. He's almost certainly gonna win this hand. It shows that he's a 98% favorite. I don't think he's gonna go anywhere despite what happens. Martin checking back, recognizing that this isn't his board. And he goes from good to the best here. So he's blocking the quads and now has the best possible hand with the full house after the king comes on the turn. Now Martin also has a king and we talked about how this can potentially get him in trouble and it all depends on what Danis decides to do here. 
Dana's playing this hand, hoping to trap his opponent on both that flop and turn. I'm not sure he's going to get a call by Martin, despite Martin having the king. That five of clubs would make some straights complete as well. However, perhaps because Danis checked the flop and the turn, that Martin might think his king is good enough to get the job done. So far, Martin, earlier in the stream, has shown that he has good reads on situations, though, and does make the correct fold. Unfortunate for Danis, he was unable to get more value after losing his first stack. At the same time, it's always nice to win a pot after you reload. And it looks like with both players at the corners of the table sitting out, that's going to put Sedge doing the big blind. Now here comes Rude. He's back to post his big blind. He must have not have walked away too far. Once again, Rude in seat eight. He is running the entire festival. So it's understandable if he needs to get up. He may need to sort out a situation. He may need to uh, take care of other things. He may just be saying hi to a player that just arrived, etc., etc. So Emil straddled and Danis called from the small blind. Frude with the Kings uh, calls from the big blind. We'll see if anybody raises up Sedgdua calling from plus one. And this is what very often happens with a button straddle. An under your gun straddle plays much differently than a button straddle, where it kind of kills a little bit of the action. But as I say that, I see that there was a raise by Martin with the King Jack 10 9. That is a pretty rundown. His King of Hearts is live for that flush draw, too, with Danis holding the ace, but nothing to go along with it. Danis going nowhere. Fruta giving up on his kings. The 9 3 didn't really coordinate very well with it. I'm not surprised to see such do it. Also, fold. Wendell, though, is a different story. He's shown he likes action. Does make the call, and there's already 480 euros in the pot. And three diamonds on this flop. Nobody with a flush. Danis currently has the most equity thanks to having the only ace among the trio of players. But he can't feel that confident. The 3-5 would also beat him in addition to the diamonds. If Danis is put into pressure, he would have to let go of this. And now it's Wendell. Wendell with the nuts already with the check mark. It's not really the nuts, but comparatively to what the other players have, he cannot lose his hand unless somebody bets him off it. And Danis with trips, but didn't fill up. And Wendell will be happy despite no more money going in that his 6-5 is good. And after losing his first stack, Wendell has uh, won a few pots now. Wendell shows a lot of heart when he's playing. He's not afraid to make moves from what we've seen from him. And you could see his table leading VPIP. Danis isn't too far behind him, but Danis joined the table late. Here's a look at everybody's chip counts. Mike, after winning a big pot earlier off Wendell, has more than 4,000 euros or more than 400 big blinds. And it looks like Wendell is busy making an order, but he will be paying attention to his card soon enough.
interesting. Martin playing this a little bit. Uh, Martin did raise. I saw two chips. I thought for some reason it was just a call, but it is a raise to 50 euros, as I would expect with a hand as strong as his. Fruta calling from out of position. And Sachdua is double suited calls as well. So this isn't the flop you want to see if you're Martin with the aces. Frude actually has more equity in the hand. He did flop top pair. If there wasn't a turn in river, obviously Martin is good at this point, but of course there is. And does fire in a raise here. That's a pot size raise to 385 euros. That gets such do out of the way. And I think that will get Martin out of the way. He does have backdoor clubs, but he can't feel that his aces are necessarily good. And well done, Frude. And here we take a look at the cumulative winnings. As we just mentioned a hand ago, Mike has won the most money at the table. Both Wendell and Danis have lost stacks. Martin has been slowly bleeding, has, as has been Daniel. Well, Frude is now up a little money, especially after winning that last pot. So we may have a double straddle here because the pot is already at 80. And once again, it is 10-10. So if we added the 20 and the 40, that would lead to a double straddle. This is what I like to see. So it is an under the gun straddle by Wendell. Martin with double straddle. So it's a battle between the straddles. Wendell just completing for 20. Martin checking back, neither player with much of anything. Wendell technically ahead before the nine jack seven flop. Martin may not realize how far ahead of he is on this flop. He only really flopped middle pair, gut shot, straight draw. If Wendell fires out, it's gonna be tricky for Martin. Martin is in position, but Wendell has shown that he can keep firing and firing. and does quickly call. Queen of clubs on the turn gives Wendell some possibility here. I mean, he does have three clubs instead of two, but he is the only of the two players to have a flush draw. It does put Martin in a trickier spot because Martin could be drawing dead to a 10 king and to other straights like a 10 eight would be for a chop that he'd be drawing to. And Wendell betting 220, enough to get the job done. Lots of heart as we keep saying about Wendell. Not afraid to fire whether he has it or not. Sometimes it's not about what you have, but how you play the player, how you play your opponent's ranges or sometimes it's just blind hyper aggression. And I don't know Wendell well enough to uh, know his style of play. We just met earlier in the evening, right before the stream started. We had a nice time. We had a little bit of time to have a little bit of a chat. So it looks like we're back to the button straddle again. So it was a small blind set. Do a first to act, he did fold. It looked like Wendell tossed in a single trip to call, and indeed he did. Not much really happening there, and he's guaranteed to play this hand out of position. I'm give the hand that was only another 10 euros to, uh, to get into the action, and everybody's folding. 
I'm not sure Mike will be folding. Mike already won a big hand against Wendell. I mean, Mike wouldn't be folding because he's straddling, but uh, in general. And Wendell hitting bottom pair, has a gut shot straight draw. All Mike has is back doors to the flush. His ace is live too. The king pairing the board on the turn. This may get checked down all the way. And now the nine double pairing the board on the turn. But Wendell's eight is still live, being that you can only use three cards of the board. So it would be the king, king, eight that would be used in his situation. And both players check once again. Wendell wins a small pot. A small pot is still better than winning no pot at all. For those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer, poker reporter, poker commentator, poker player. I've been playing myself for about 35 years, so older than I've probably been playing poker longer than some of you have been alive. Mostly mixed games in the earlier days. And then during the Hold'em boom, I was like everybody else, got into it. I do not like playing Hold'em cash, even though I can. I just get bored very quickly and then lose some patience. I do love playing mixed games the most. And PLO is always a favorite of mine as well. Now for tournaments, I like hold them. I can be very patient in tournaments, but for cash games, even though I can talk a good game, when I'm actually at the table, I can alter from my strategy fast if I get a, too many cards that I need to fold, 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 fold. When I'm playing cash games, I like to play hands. This is why I prefer playing PLO or mixed games. But we're going four way to the flop, not much in the pot under 100 euros. And it's Mike with the flush draw. Also has some gut shots to a couple of straights there. Has the most equity. Wendell flop top pair. Mike recognizing the value of his hand, betting two thirds of the pot. Sejdua has that open ender, also bottom pair calls. And both Wendell and the other player in the hand got out of the way. And it's the five of spades, so Sejdua did complete that straight, but unfortunately for him, Mike completed his flush. You could see the check mark there by his name. Sajdua knows that a straight might not be good, even though he was hoping for a five. It just wasn't the five of spades he was hoping for. If it was the five of clubs, he would have the nuts. Now Mike checking again, is Sajdua gonna try for thin value? Now he doesn't, he is trying for some thin value, even though there's no value to be had. Mike is likely never folding here. Mike might even be thinking about raising here, but that could get dangerous, because he could be behind an ace High flush, that's less likely considering Mike also has three spades in his hand and not just two. Does call. And uh, wins yet another pot. Now Mike did take a break. Comes back and is back to his winning ways. We have multiple players on their phones right now. I suppose that's fine in between hands. I would like to see uh, them put away their phones once the cards are in the air or a step away from the table. We will see if we can get that kind of policy in place tomorrow, depending on what happens here. You can see Frude is getting up quite often when he's using his phone. It's possible that these players are just chatting with friends and sharing on social media 
It doesn't appear anybody is watching the stream at the moment. And it does appear the phones are put away. So Daniel calling the straddle from the big blind. Frude also calling from a couple of seats over. Sajdua calling and Wendell opting in position not to add any more to the pot with his weak holding of jack 5-4-3 with three clubs. And Frude flopping the nuts on this rainbow flop of 10 queen jack. He has Broadway. It is possible that somebody will outdraw him. Now that club on the turn gives Wendell a flush draw, but it's not a very strong one. And Frude now is going to try to get some value. Sag Dua folds. Let's see if Wendell calls with his flush draw. Wendell could understand that he might be drawing dead to a straight and a better flush draw but does make the call and will reevaluate on the river. So it's a blank eight of spades on the river. Frude bets 50, that'll get the job done. Wendell has nothing. Wendell's not turning his hand into a bluff on that scary board. It basically would have been a bluff. It's not turning it into a bluff, there was no made hand at that point in time. But Wendell doesn't always have his foot on the pedal, has some different gears. Finding Wendell to be the most entertaining player on the table. He's certainly the most aggressive player at the table. That might change as stacks change, as players get used to each other. From talking to a few of the players before the stream began, it didn't seem like many of them knew each other. So sometimes you have the dynamic where you see some strange plays, but they're based on the players knowing the tendencies of each other. But They've been playing together now for a little bit of time, so maybe they picked up some things, despite not seeing the whole cards like we do. But Daniel raising from the small blind to 85 and such, do a calling from the hijack in position. Both players have good rundowns, but such do a has Daniel's rundown dominated. But neither player hitting a piece of that. We could see how far such do a is ahead but if he was facing pressure by Daniel, he'd have to be letting go of his hand at some point in time, if not on the flop, then later. But now that all changes, he does have top pair. It's not really that good of a hand, but it could be good enough to see a river, but it doesn't matter because Daniel bets again. Sedge do it, betting out half the pot. That'll get the job done. There's really no reason for Daniel to continue along. That hand could have cost it more. It's such a pretty hand when you have king, queen, jack, 10, double suited. And he may be disappointed about that board, but it could have gone far worse for him. And here's a look at the chip counts once again. Both Danis and Wendell lost their initial stacks. Martin just has been slowly bleeding. Daniel and Sedge do it also down a little bit. In addition to Mike being the big winner, Emil and Frode are both up as well. And these numbers should be fairly accurate actually, if not fully accurate, considering there's no rake being taken at the feature table. So in the past when I've commentated cash games, the chip counts are always off a bit because very often uh, there is rake taken, more often than not in fact. So it's another benefit to playing at the feature table at Card Casino. Not only do you get to play in front of friends and family, 
and fans of poker, but you also save a few bucks by not having to pay any rake. So we had a couple of limps before Martin jacked it up to uh, 60 euros with a double suited ace, king, king, deuce, PLO weight style, although it is a fairly good PLO hand too, despite that two of diamonds. Daniel, also with a pretty hand, pretty easy to play post flop, and is in position with 8875 and did have that straddle. And the two limpers also called. And Martin flopping top set, but it's a dangerous board. And Wendell may feel that he has some blockers depending on what comes on the turn. Nobody having two clubs in their hand for that flush draw. So this bet of 175 will likely get the job done. I mean, Sajdua does have a double gutter but even that top part of the double gutter, if a queen comes, he's behind an ace-10. And Wendell folding as well. So Martin wearing that Dodgers jersey. We may have to talk to him about that. We're not fans of the Dodgers, and I believe when I was looking at his jersey before the stream started, it is a Mookie Betts jersey, and Mookie Betts used to play for the Red Sox, and we're certainly not a fan of the Red Sox. I'm originally from New Jersey. I've lived in Lithuania for close to 15 years now. I don't follow baseball as closely as I used to, but some things are hard to, uh, to get rid of, such as your dislike for certain teams. So I do a limping again. He's been limping quite a lot. I would have liked to have seen a raise with the queen, queen, nine, nine. But perhaps he didn't want to jack up a pot playing it out of position. There's various reasons why he could be doing this, especially from early position. But it's Daniel that raises with the king, king, eight, deuce. That isn't as pretty to me because the eight and deuce aren't really connected to anything, but it's more than fine, you're in position. Very often you can get the button to fold and then you're in position in the hand. But this is what Sach Dua was waiting for. So now I love this play. Three betting. Obviously if he's four bet, he could be well behind. But in this case, it should work out for him. Everybody does fold. Doesn't need to see a flop to win 200 euros just like that. Anytime you can pick up 20 big blinds without having to see a flop, life is good, regardless of what you have. Let's see if Satch Dua lips again. There's no straddle this time. Nope, he doesn't opt to play his ace, queen, six, deuce. These are hands I like to see in a game I love to play in PL 08. Or a limit 08 I like as well. I even enjoy playing NL 08, but that for me I enjoy more in tournament format than in cash game format. I do love pot limit games. I play pot limit super doer's choice a lot when I'm on the road. I play some PLO when back at home because we cannot uh, currently run a lot of mixed games in Lithuania. Each game needs to be licensed. But here in Bratislava, things are much different. You can play anything you would like. I will likely play a little bit of cash games later in the week myself. And not much happening there. Daniel was aggressive despite bricking everything and uh, won a small pot. I should also be commenting on Daniel wearing a Chicago Bulls jersey. Now I grew up as a Knicks fan. I'm slightly partial to the Nets as well, even though you're not supposed to like both teams. But I certainly 
don't like to see the Bulls do well. I mean, I did appreciate Michael Jordan, but he always put a big hurting on the Knicks back when they were good, and they're good again this year. They're not a championship caliber team. I do follow basketball rather closely. That is the sport in Lithuania. I follow Lithuanian basketball a little bit closer than the NBA, but when I can catch a game, I love to catch a game. One too many kings there for Martin. Does fold from under the gun. Some quick folds. Anus came here to play, has a double suited hand, raising it up, it looks like, to 40. Makes the quick call here, Frode. Or maybe not, but it looked like he tossed some chips in. He did indeed call. Looks like Mike is ready to do something. He is calling from the small blind. And such Dua wasn't in the hand, actually, because it wouldn't make sense if Mike is small blind and Wendell is big blind. And there is an empty chair where such Dua was sitting and Wendell opting to complete the action with a call from the big blind. Now, equities are pretty close here. Danis has a flush draw, gut shot, straight draw. Wendell with top pair. He also has an open-ended straight draw. Frude is the only one that didn't hit a piece of this. And Mike, of course, hit top two pair. But it's Danis after it's checked over to him to lead off with 50 euros. He was the pre-flop aggressor. I don't expect Mike to fold here his top two pair. Is he gonna raise or call is the question. And I also don't expect Wendell going anywhere. Because a non-spade six or jack, especially since Mike just called. If Mike raised, then things could be different for Wendell, but Wendell seems to love the action. The ace of diamonds on the turn still gives Mike two pair, but look how close these equities are. It might be the most aggressive player takes it down, but I don't I think we're going to see a big bet here, but maybe I'll stand corrected. That looked like a bunch of chips to 275, so it is a big bet, nearly a pot size bet. Mike asking to see the stack of, I believe, Danis. Thinking things over. His two pair is no longer the top two pair. He doesn't really have any redraws, so he could be drawing very thin. We can see he's technically ahead at the moment. But if he calls, I would expect Wendell to keep in the hand. Now, I'm not sure what Wendell is going to do now because he's out of position. Wendell quickly letting go of his hand. And well done, Danis. I mean, he did have some outs, but it was the aggression by Danis that got job done, and he is showing his cards. Maybe trying to get into the heads of his opponent. I'm not sure what information he's giving out there. I guess he's saying, I'm not afraid to bet my draws on the turn. I'll have to ask Danis privately later. It could be just for stream entertainment value too. He likely has a friend or two watching or plans to watch it back tomorrow and just wanted to show that he could be a showboat as well. But he's a super nice guy. I got to know him a little bit better during the pandemic. We both live in Lithuania. He's Lithuanian. We live in different cities in Lithuania, but uh, he very often comes down to Vilnius to, uh, to play some poker. We're constantly talking about when we're going to play mixed games together. He is a much better, despite me playing mixed games for so many years, he's a much better mixed game player than I am. But that doesn't stop me from wanting to play with him. And Vincent Thomas Saukas also wants to play with us, a WSOP bracelet winner. We just have to find the time and the place and get a few more players to join us. So it'll likely be at some point, possibly not even in Lithuania, that we uh, that we play. 
unfortunately Danis is not staying with us for many, very many more days. He came out for the mixed game portion, which he did quite well with. But well, we already have 240 in the pot, so enough about that and back to the action. And it's Jack 10 10, two hearts, Mike with the flush draw. Martin's aces are still good, but he has to be concerned about this board. Does check, recognizes that this isn't the board for him. Now, the, the Queen of Clubs may not look like a good card for him, and it really isn't because there's two flush draws out there. But he has blockers to that Broadway, so he could rep the Broadway depending on what happens on the river. Maybe he wants to rep it now. It doesn't mean another player couldn't have ace-king, but it reduces the odds of them having that. And it's Wendell once again, with the worst of it, getting the job done. Aggression working for him now. He It's been working for him most of the day, other than the one time where it didn't work and he lost his stack. <coughs> but now Wendell has to be close to even, or at least uh, getting there. So we did have a straddle because we saw Martin first to act in the small blind. Completes the straddle. Daniel tossing another 10 euros in two with a decent hand. And Danis raising it up with this uh, ace, deuce, nine, six, double suited. It's not gonna clear everybody out, but it is clearing enough players out. Wendell with a double suited hand, he is in position. It's not the best looking hand, but based on how Wendell's playing, I expect him to stay in the hand. And not only does he stay in the hand, he three bets large and putting the pressure on left and right. And Danis calls. I mean, he is double suited. He does have Wendell's diamonds covered. So if it's a diamond flop, things could get dangerous for Wendell. But there are no diamonds on this flop. Wendell is ahead after pairing up his 10, but that isn't really that strong. On the other hand, Wendell has shown that he could be aggressive whether he makes it or not. Is he gonna just jam it in? And that will work, because Danis cannot be calling with what he has at this point in time. He looks a little bit disappointed about this turn of events. I did like Danis's heart there with the raise. The problem with calling that three bet is he's playing that hand very awkwardly out of position. Typically in poker, your ranges should loosen up as you get closer and closer to that button and should tighten up from positions such as under the gun. But when you're deep stacked like this, it could be different. So, so far we have some straddle completions until Wendell raises it up with the mystery hand. Wendell not afraid to jack up these pots, and he has a decent hand this time with the ace-king, eight-seven. He will be playing this hand in position if anybody comes along. is being called.
So it's being explained in Slovakian what actually happened here. I'm not quite sure the floor, why the floor is being called. What I can see right now that Daniel still has some cards in front of him. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but Daniel opting to call to 125 with his jacks. Now Emil folded his jacks, but we know the jacks are dead. And Saj Dua calling with his king 10, 7, 4, king of 10 of hearts. And there's two hearts on this flop. Nobody with the nuts, but Daniel has blockers to uh, the straight here. But you, don't, you shouldn't expect Satch Dua to go anywhere if Daniel leads out and Daniel opts to check. Satch Dua opts to do a little bit of pot control. There's 500 in the pot. And the ace of hearts in the turn, so now Satch Dua with the nuts. Opting to uh, disguise or perhaps waiting to see if the board pairs up with the five of spades completing the board in the river. Is Sach Dua gonna check again, hoping that he traps the ever active Wendell? And if so, will it work? Does bet 300. Now is Wendell gonna call with this two pair? The turn was checked. Camera's still on Wendell. He's thinking things over. We can see he should fold, but that's easy for us to say. He did make the call. He is going to get the bad news that he was unable to pick off a bluff with Sach Dua holding the absolute nuts. Wins a 1.1K pot. And we can see that puts him from negative to positive on the cumulative winnings leaderboard here. Mike, who won an early pot against Wendell to stack him off, is still the big winner at the table, up 2.4K. Mike is over in seat number one. One of the familiar faces to me. Sounds like day one E of the 500,000 guaranteed Poker North Masters 800 euro buy-in event will be over soon with three more hands. The turbo day one F is still underway. Tomorrow will feature day two of that event. We do not have an idea of what first place we'll pay yet, what the final prize pool will be, but we know it'll be at least 500,000 euros. So Mike raising it up to 40 from early position. Daniel calling with a pretty hand from the button. Mike flopping the nut flush draw while Daniel flopping top pair and a Broadway gut shot straight draw. It's Mike that is going to bet his flush draw for 80 euros, 80% 80 of the pot. Despite Daniel having top pair, we could see he has more equity. He'll very often fold here, and indeed he does. And Mike's timing seems to be good left and right.
Martin raising it up to 60 from the hijack. There was a straddle this hand with the queen, nine, eight, seven. Sajdua calling from under the gun. Wendell coming along. Perhaps there was no straddle. I was busy responding to a, an important message. And based on the bet sizing, it was possible that Sajdua, who has been known to limp, limped, and then Martin uh, raised. And there's 200 in the pot on this deuce, deuce, five flop. It's a rainbow board. Probably he who bets it gets it, considering that nobody has a pair in their hand, nobody has a two in their hand. And Wendell, who has shown he can be active, he does have a wheel draw, a gut shot wheel draw, and that's about it. He also, I mean, it wouldn't be a wheel draw, actually, because he has the four, six as well, so the three would complete a straight, stronger than the wheel, but it's irrelevant because Sajdua and the other player in the hand did indeed fold. Wendell is the kind of guy I would love in my home game, whether he is profitable or not is irrelevant. You want action players and he is an action player. However, the stakes we play are likely too low for Wendell to join. Daniel with some weak aces here, but strong enough to raise when you have two aces and any other two. He has a, the nut club draw if there's a some clubs on the board, he'll be happy to see that. Danis with a pretty double suited hand. Three betting, interesting here. Is Daniel just gonna get it in? It won't exactly be a get in, but it'll be close enough. Indeed he does. Now is Danis gonna call off here? We could see that actually the equities are fairly close. So it's the 410, Danis will still have less than a pot bet size. He has less than half a pot bet size behind. Perhaps can still get away from this if he does not hit a piece of this board. But he does hit a piece, he hits two pair. It's not the nuts. He doesn't have the spades, but we could see he's far ahead now. And it's going to be hard for Daniel to call a bet, but instead he's going to be the one jamming. And being that Danis has so much in the pot, I expect to see a call here more often than not. Indeed, he does make the call. There's 1,600 euros in the pot, but maybe some of that is uh, just doing a little math. I believe that includes the fact that Daniel has 200 euros more. So it's about 1,400, I believe, that Danis can win. A four spades on the turn does not change anything. And the jack of hearts on the river gives Danis a better two pair than he fought, but they are running it twice. So Danis wins the first board. And it looks like Danis is on the way to potentially win it again. And he wins both boards, doubles his stack. He was in for a thousand with the second bullet. He was in for a thousand with his first bullet. Just won a pot of 1,600 euros. Because they're on the TV table, there is zero rake, so that's all going to him. So close to even now for Danis. Meanwhile, uh, Daniel's aces did not hold. Most of the money did get in pre-flop. There was some potential for Danis to get away after the flop 
if it wasn't one of his liking, despite having less than half a pot size bet behind. But certainly, despite there being hands better than what he had, he was going nowhere after flopping two pair. Looks like we have some food. I'm always happy to see when players are using utensils at the table. It disgusts me sometimes when players are using their hands and then touching the chips, et cetera, et cetera. And we can take a look at the chip counts. Everybody over the starting buy-in of 1,000. 1,000 is just a minimum, though. A few of the players did buy in for more. And it looks like Daniel opted for a reload. So I think the chip counts included that reload. Bunch of lipping going on. So such do it calls, Daniel calls to a raise. It was a raise of seventy by Mike who straddled with his double suited decent rundown. King nine eight rainbow flop set. Do a flops a set. Mike with the open ended straight draw with the better end of that. Daniel and Emil with not that much equity, but it does check around for the three of clubs on the turn. So such do it not only has top set with a draw to a full house, but also now has a flush draw. You could see how much equity he has and the six of hearts on the river. If someone bets, he may not think his top set is good. In this case it is, and thus far everybody has been checking. So Mike, who is the aggressor, checking as well. And Sajdua will win the hand after flopping that set of nines. Tasty 300 euro pot. And despite the stakes being lower than yesterday, yesterday we had a lovely 50-50 PLO stream. It was straddled to 195% of the time, sometimes straddled to 200. That was an exciting stream as well. You can check that out on the Card Casino Bratislava YouTube channel. Even though it was broadcasted live, you can watch it. It is definitely worth watching. The action has been good here today as well. To me, the stakes don't matter as long as the action is good. Of course, uh, a 50-50 game where this action was good most of the time was very entertaining, but I am enjoying watching these players play, and I hope you are too. And it seems like a very well-experienced crew. As I mentioned, I'm... Um, uh, friends with Danis who sits in seat number seven. We both live in Lithuania. Brode is uh, out of his chair in seat eight, uh, organizer of the Poker North Masters and Norwegian Championships. And the player that I'm loving to watch the most is in seat number three, Wendell, because he is the action player. 
He did lose a stack early on, but he has recovered since then. And yesterday was all under the gun and under the gun plus one straddles. Today we're seeing mostly button straddles when it has been straddled. So Mike raising it up, it looks like to 75. Such Dua, who was on the button and straddle, looks like he made the call. And let's see what Daniel does from the big blind who called the straddle and it looks like he's calling again with his jack-jack 6-4. Mike with the prettiest hand this time around. Also the big winner currently at the table. And flops top two on this uh, nine king 10 rainbow flop. Daniel is blocking to some extent a potential straight, making it less likely somebody has a queen jack. And is betting likely due to that fact from out of position I'm not sure that's gonna be enough to get Mike out of the way. It may make a difference that Sajdua is also in the hand. I think if it was Wendell betting, Mike would call, but maybe not with Daniel. And does let go of the best hand. Well done, Daniel. Betting his blockers. Winning a small pot, but every pot counts. Another look at the chip counts, folks. Five players sitting with over 2,000 or over 200 big blinds. They've already played 55 hands together. Not all the players were here from the start. Danis was the latest player to join in seat number seven, but he's been here for a while now. And you might be asking why Mike is wearing sunglasses in a cash game, but I was down there before and those lights are quite bright so I can't blame him at all. I don't think it's a disguise any tells from his eyes. I think it's just, uh, it is brighter whenever you're playing on a TV table. So, so far, we have a few calls after, uh, after the straddle. It looks like the, that was a raise by Mike with this rundown. It was a raise to 50, so not a very big raise, considering it was a straddle to 20 and a bunch of callers. So I think he is just trying to build the pot. Nobody's gonna fall to this anyway. Mike isn't in position this time, though. Well, actually, he is in position because uh, the hijack cut off and button all folded, so that's also a positional raise building the pot. And Dana's yelling, family pot, finally. Yeah, it wasn't in position, because I see now that we have the hijack cutoff and straddle hole calling, so there's 400 euro in the pot. Sedge do a flopping that set with his cowboys but only has 48% equity, but that's because of how many players in the hand. Nobody else really has that much of anything. Martin, we could see, has 10% uh, equity with just really some backdoors to a flush, a gut shot straight draw. Daniel has two pair though, so if he hits his ace, then his full house will be better than such do us, but it doesn't look like he's overvaluing his ace five. Fruity getting rid of his hand as well, and it should be an easy fold for Mike. So despite it just being a bet and a lot of folds on the flop, because of Mike building up that pot, it turned out that it was a 350 euro profit for such do a well done.
but it's nice to see that this is a very friendly game. Even the 50-50 pillow, I mean, those are serious stakes. It was 50-50-100, 50-50-100, 200 game last night. Everybody was being very friendly. That's what you like to see at a TV table. But in general, this is portraying the atmosphere here in Bratislava. Typically, when the Norwegians come to town, wherever the Norwegian championships are held, a lot of fun is to be had. And this is certainly the case here in Bratislava, not just at the TV table. In fact, they may be even a little bit more serious at the TV table than the outer tables. Wendell still on top of that VPIP leaderboard. I'm not sure we can call that a leaderboard or not, but he has been the most active. And even though Sech Dua is close to him with 58%, he's been a bit more passive with more limping and Wendell's doing a lot more raising. So it looks like we have at least, is it a triple straddle we have? Because there's already 160 in the pot. It may be a quadruple straddle actually. So it's 20, 40, 80. No, it's a triple straddle. Pretty liking what he sees with this ace, queen, 10, four. Is he just gonna call? He does just call. Already 230 euros in the pot with all the straddling going on, and it was such do it with the triple straddle, with the double straddle anyway. And then Wendell must have done the third straddle, so we have learned that there's no limit to the amount of straddles here at Card Casino. At a lot of places, there's no limit, but at a lot of other places, it could be just one straddle, two straddles. Mike makes the call. Sech Dua, who did the double straddle, makes the call. But Wendell, once again, making things entertaining with his king 955, raising it up to 410 euros now. Is Fruity just going to ship it in? And he ships it in. This is developed into a massive pot with the triple straddle. Mike getting out of the way. Expects Sech Dua to quickly fold. And what is Wendell? going to do here. It's an extra thousand for him to call his stack with a very weak holding. I mean, the equities are very close, but still, can he call here with this king 955? We see it would be a coin flip, but that's only because of other players' cards coming into those calculations. Typically, you're never going to be ahead with this kind of hand, and you could be very far behind. Then again, it would likely be run twice. What is Wendell going to do? While I love his heart, he kind of put himself in a position at the moment. He probably is getting proper pot odds, but that's iffy as well. But there's already 2,000 in the pot. And does lay it down. Well played there by Frude. Wendell giving him props as well. My hand was really bad, that's what Wendell just said. He wasn't lying at all. <laughs> Frodo is saying thank you.
Sajdua doing the calculations here. Easy money is what Danis is saying here. <laughs> Sajdua getting a good laugh. Maybe taking a quick break there. Martin with a very pretty hand. He's going nowhere here. Raising it up to 40 euros. It's quickly folding around so fast that we're not seeing the cards. And it's over to Athena's making a, I wouldn't say a tight fold, but he was on the button there. And a walk. Perhaps showing some respect for Martin. I think I would have called the button there if I was Danis, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, I consider him to be one of the stronger players. Not everybody knows him, but in terms of mixed games, he's uh, if he's not the best in Lithuania, he's very close to the best. He did win three coupes last year in mixed games, so he also does quite well online. He was on three final tables in a row here at the Poker Masters portion of the uh, Poker North Masters portion of the festival. So during the mixed games, and he did win the eight game, the 550 buy-in eight game for 11,265 euros. He can play all sorts of disciplines. He runs deep. He ran deep recently at the Kings of Tallinn that I live reported. He was on the final table of that, so he can also play No Limit Hold'em. An all-around great player. Also somebody that I love having a chat with when we're both free. And practice my Lithuanian with, because I'm not a native Lithuanian. So it's a bit of a family pot, five ways to the flop with 210 euros in the pot. Ace, tray, nine, two diamonds. Danis is the only one with two diamonds in his hand for that. Flush draw also has the ace in his hand. However, Daniel flopped a set of trays. His equity isn't as strong as I would imagine. Perhaps it's also because Emil has that gut shot wheel draw. Technically a draw to a better set, although that would give Thanus a wheel if that four came out. But it checks around, oh no, Daniel bets 210 after it's checked around to him. Emil folds. It doesn't look like Danis is going anywhere. As we mentioned, he has a gut shot to the wheel. He also has a seven high flush draw, so not the strongest one. And does have top pair to boot. But now look at this turn. Quads for Daniel. Is he gonna be able to get any more value out of his hand? Keeping that poker face on, but reaching for some chips at the same time that's less than half the pot. Perhaps trying to, trying to price in those uh, draws or hoping that Danis had a full house to come over the top or at least call. But no love for Daniel. He did get some extra value from that. Ah, I thought we were gonna go on a little bit longer for some reason. The stream started so it's a three hour stream instead of a two hour, instead of a four hour stream, folks, because I heard just now the floor come over and announce the final three hands. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to be with you very much longer. And we did miss the early part of this due to some technical problems with, uh, with the audio. I wanna thank the technical team for being very quick to fix it once the problem was identified. Great job here by everybody at Card Casino. 
It's my first time here, but I feel so at home already. I do love the city of Bratislava. It's not my first time to Bratislava, but my first time the Kart Casino was for this festival. So I've been here for a few days already. I love the Norwegian players. I love the local players from Slovakia. It's a nice combination. It's a bit of a change from the usual home of the Norwegian Championships in Dublin, but City West is going through some renovations at the moment. And at least for now, Card Casino is the home of the Norwegian Championships. So we have three cards left, three hands left, but uh, one of those hands is gonna have Danis with the mystery hand. I say it too soon. We can see his hand, queen, queen, six, five. Kind of a boring hand, unfortunately, considering we only have a few hands left. But that's poker sometimes. Not every hand can be a high action, high octane hand. It looks like Sech Dua coming back for the final two hands. He may not know that there's only two hands left. It will be nice to see. I'm gonna go upstairs as soon as this is over to where the players were playing to see if they're gonna continue along with the action. They seem to be having a good time with each other. There seems to be sufficient action at the table. However, it is also 1.30 in the morning, which is not super late poker time, but could be late for some of these players. But everybody, there's no yawning at the table. Everybody looks lively and alert. Meanwhile, we had at least, no, we had two straddles in this hand. So it looks like an under the gun and under the gun plus one. Daniel completing from the big blind with ace five, seven, nine with two clubs, along with the ace of clubs in his hand, making the call. Meanwhile, Saj Dua raising that cutoff to 200 euros with the queen jack, jack nine. We've, we haven't seen him, uh, I mean, we saw one play that he was very active where he limp preflop and then three bet big after he was raised. But maybe it's because it's the penultimate hand of the stream. And I think I just heard Dana said, last hand lets everybody straddle. I'm not sure all the players are going to agree to that, but maybe they will. They worked hard to get their money, and that would build up the pop. Maybe they will do a bomb pop, though. But meanwhile, Daniel flopping top two. He doesn't have any diamonds for the redraw. It is possible he's behind with 3-4. But he does bet the pot and does take it down with nobody else connecting with anything. And we are on the final hand of the stream, and I know that the stream is going to cut off fairly quickly after the hand. So I want to thank you all for tuning in today, and a special thank you to Card Casino Bratislava for hosting the Poker North Masters and Norwegian Championship. Special thank you also for hosting the stream on YouTube, for running all the technical bits, for, uh, for hosting an amazing event as well. I mean, there's dozens of cash game tables, many tournaments running, including day two tomorrow of the 500,000 guaranteed 800 euro buy-in Poker North Master. And it seems like Emil is getting up. I'm not quite sure. He is tipping before he leaves. I guess he doesn't want any part of a bomb pot because it looks like all players have 50 in. That's fine. It's not mandatory, but there is quite a bit in the pot. I want to give a special thank you also to uh, Frode in seat number eight for inviting me out to the Poker North Masters and Norwegian Championship. It is my first time here working. I have come for portions of it before as a player back when it was around the same time as the Irish Open in Dublin. So I am enjoying my experience, enjoying every moment of it, enjoying meeting up with some old friends. And thank you to the sponsors as well of this festival, Unibet, Coolbet, Betsafe, also Guts. I lost all my, uh, the sponsors that were on the background, but I think we caught them all there. They have sent literally hundreds of qualifiers over. 
the people that work there I've known for years at all those companies actually and all lovely people as well. And now that I did all my thank yous, we'll get back to the action. It says pot 20, but we know that's not pot of 20. Okay, so here it's getting updated with uh, the fact that it's a bomb pot. So there's seven players in the hand. A bomb pot means you put a certain amount in before the flop. It's predetermined and then you see a flop. Very often, depending on the rules, it's a pot size bet or nothing at all. But maybe it's a bit different here. Everybody commenting on what possibly can come of this. I do not see an eight in anybody's hand, but Danis though. So Danis does flop trips. He also has outs to uh, a potential baby straight, although if a seven came, that would probably actually slow him down and not speed him up. He would have preferred to have a nine to go along with that, but I don't think he's gonna be super concerned at this point, but let's see how this plays out. I'm not quite sure about the action because the graphics aren't updating and the camera seems to be paused on the board at the moment, but I'm assuming that Daniel will check. I wouldn't be surprised if Dana's bet. Oh, it's a bomb pot with two flops. That's what we're waiting for, folks. I apologize, and maybe it's with three flops even because we're still waiting. Is it gonna be three boards or two boards? It looks like it's two boards because now we're back to where the players are. So what's going on on the second board? We can't see what it is at the moment. So apologies for being slightly in the dark. We could see it earlier when it was on the table. We do know Danis has the biggest piece of that first board, although there's a lot of he would need to fade. But at least in that first board, I see a king that would give him a full house. Now Danis should feel more comfortable, but it, unfortunately for him, it gives Martin a better full house. So that could get dangerous for him. There is a four diamonds on that second board, but I can't read the rest of it. It doesn't appear the stream software is able to really handle what's happening right now with Bomb Pot. Or perhaps it's just because it's edging on two in the morning here in Bratislava. And it's Frody reaching for some chips here. So maybe he had a piece of that second board. Everybody likes to win the last pot. Everybody likes to win bomb pots. So it's possible Frody hit nothing at all. We do know he would at least have a flush draw on that first board, but. And I thought it was 889 King and not 889 Jack which make, would make a lot more sense considering what Martin just did. Now is Danis gonna call off with his full house? He's not gonna be getting some good news here. And we will get an idea of the strength of Fruity's hand on that second board depending on what he does here. He can't out bluff at this point what's going on. We see a lot of chips and we don't know the exact sizing so we can see there was a bet of 375 by Fruity to begin with. And then it looks like Martin came over the top with a pot size bet, and it looks like Danis committed the rest of his stack. It is a nine, eight king, I believe, on that first board. So the graphics, I believe, are incorrect, and it's just confusing because of the fact that there's two boards fully. So the reader is potentially not picking it up correctly. This bomb pot has developed into some massive action. It doesn't look like a river has been dealt yet, actually. I could 
I'm not sure, but I, th I thought that was already the river. I'm trying to count the cards, but it's very difficult, and I know that the graphics aren't correct on at least one of those boards, because we did see a king come on that first board. And Frode's all in, so he must have hit something on that second board. Yeah, Danis gets the bad news that his full house is no good. I mean, if an eight comes on the river. Maybe he's drawing to the second board. Now we can see the boards, and indeed it was eight, eight, nine king on that first board. So you can see on the first board that Martin's kings for king's full beats Danis's eights full, at least as we stand. And I was correct, there was no river dealt yet. And Frude, okay, and this makes sense now. He has the wheel on that second board, but it's a dangerous double suited board. So he's not out of the works yet. The jack of spades. That leaves Danis drawing thin, but Danis completes a flush on the second board. So he gets saved by the second board there, despite being utterly dominated. He likely got it in more because of that full house on the full first board, and rather unfortunate for Frude. I mean, he did have to fade diamonds and hearts, with Martin holding the king deuce of hearts, but still rather unfortunate for him. He did have a flush on that first board, but uh, so Frude thinking either my flush is good or my wheel is good. I mean, he had such solid hands. And Dana saying lucky me, but he was also unlucky with that king hitting the, uh, the turn, I have to say. But lucky enough to get that second board, so a little unlucky, a little lucky, then unlucky, then lucky once again. He's more than happy to chop that pot. and the floor is inviting them to continue at another table. But in the meantime, our stream is wrapping up. I want to thank you. Once again, this is Jason Glatzer. It's been an absolute honor uh, commentating this cash game. I will be back with you again tomorrow. The scheduled time is around 9 p.m., but depending on the stakes that are arranged, it may start a little bit later. But subscribe to the YouTube of Card Casino Bratislava, and you will get a notification when we are live. I should have a guest or two with me tomorrow as well, depending on who is running deep in the 800 Poker Masters. And we should have an interesting lineup for you as well. Thank you very much once again for tuning in. Thank you to Card Casino Bratislava. Thank you to all the sponsors. And once again, thank you to everybody that's helping make the Poker North Masters and Norwegian Championships as good as it can be. And see you tomorrow. Peace out.